Hey guys, it's going to right again and welcome back to my channel again. So today I want to do another video on Oculus Quest development. I want to show you how we can use the controller that Oculus provided in the asset store as part of the Oculus integration and also how we can extend this. So what I'm going to be doing today is executing the jump by capturing the input from the controller and also doubling the speed of the run. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you this scene, which I'm going to basically create a new VR controller and, and show you what I actually did because I already created it. But I also wanted to show you how we can execute a jump and also how we could basically add a run and also double X run. So what I did is I added a couple more obstacles to this scene. So the reason why I did that is because I want to be able to jump and then basically go through some of this. I also want to make sure that I can jump in and get up here and go around so like i show you on the on the previous video i'm using pro builder and the reason why i'm using that is so that i can go and prototype a scene pretty fast and also show you some of the main concepts when it comes to you know using vr so what i wanted to do is i didn't want to modify the the main core controller that oculus provides so if you look at this vr player controller it has a character controller it also has an OVR player controller, which is the one that Oculus provided to us, but it also has a VR controller. So this VR controller is gonna be ours. This is gonna be the one, the playground that I'm gonna be creating for this video and for also future videos. So the if I open it up, I can show you some of the things that I have. So I went through and, and tried to, you know, basically understand everything that the OVR player controller was doing. I also noticed that the jump for instance, is something that you have to call manually. It's not very, it's not exposed as a, as a trigger. And it is exposed as a public property, which means that we can call it from another component, but it's not exposed here, meaning that it's not executed by any type of input. So what I decided to do is I, I wanted to do that and I wanted to execute the jump. And I also wanted to execute, basically modify the, the, the scale multiplier and the move scale multiplier is basically a property that Oculus is using for changing the speed. So if we go and search for that, you can see that by default it's set to 1.0. And it's also a private property. I didn't want to change the implementation that they had. So instead of me going in and changing this code, what I did is I, I'm going to be calling the public property that they are exposing already. And the idea behind this is that I built a wrapper that it's going to work with future versions of the Oculus integration. So right now, this is the wrapper. It's very basic. It has a requirement component at the very top, which is going to be requiring the OVR player controller. And I also have a private variable so that I can access it throughout the throughout this class. Then the other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to override the move, move speed controller. I set it to 3.0 by default. And I also added another property because I think it'll be cool if I could run and I could double that speed. So I added a property to allow double X speed and by default it's set to false. But if you set it to true, we're going to be basically checking for that property below. And then if it's set to true, I'm going to double the speed of the, of the move speed multiplier. So when the game starts, I'm going to get an instance of the OVR player controller. And then I'm going to change the move speed controller by calling the Oculus implementation, which is going to be called by doing controller that set move scale multiplier, and then passing the multiplier that we define as one of our instance variables. The other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to jump. I wanted to see how jump was going to behave in Oculus when I did the experience. So I added an OVR input and I'm capturing get down. And if the button that is the primary index trigger is pressed, then I'm going to do a jump. I'm also using, if you notice, I'm using controller that jumps. So that comes from this controller, which is the OVR player controller. Of course, we could change the implementation if we wanted to do a double jump or if we wanted to do some other crazy things. I'm going to be doing that in the future videos. So the other thing that I wanted to do as well is I wanted to change the speed. I wanted to double the speed. So what I'm doing is I'm doing an OVR input that get also checking on the button, the secondary index trigger. Instead of checking the, the primary, in this case, I'm going to check the secondary index trigger as long as the allow double speed is set to true. If it is set to true, we're going to basically start running by 2x. So it's going to use that number and then multiply by 2, which is going to basically double the speed as of which we are running. 
and then otherwise if that is not the case then we're gonna set it back to default so that's basically most of the stuff that I wanted to show you so I also make changes to to the scene in here I like I show you in the in the beginning of the video I just had a couple more obstacles the other thing that I want to mention as well is that I'm using a prefab and this prefab is not a prefab that comes with oculus I created my own variant and then these variances are gonna be in the prefabs so you can see that it's now VR player controller and anything with OVR it's gonna be from the oculus implementation so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it running running and I'm gonna show you how it looks in the oculus device so let me go ahead and click build and then I'm gonna hit save and this is gonna push it to my device and I know I'm running out of battery so I'll just ignore that for now I think we have plenty and this is gonna push it to the device and I'll show you how that looks as soon as it's completed all right guys so it looks like this is now launching so let me show you how the experience looks like so we can now see the the new area you can now walk very fast so you can see how I am running way 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 fast versus what it was what it was before the other thing that I can also do is I can jump so I'm basically hitting my trigger button and if we get close to this and I go forward you can see that I'm now I'm now in the air and I can go and look down I gotta fix the, the jumping because it's it's really not very intuitive gravity is not taking into effect it's just very rigid so it's really hard to for me to keep you know to keep going forward when I'm in the air so I'm gonna have to fix that in the next in the, in the next few videos the other thing that I can do is I can now do a double X so you can see that I'm pressing the other trigger button and I'm also running at a double X speed and I'm running really really fast really really fast and this is super cool so and then I can also jump so that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys if you guys have any any questions about what I'm just showing you let me know thank you all right guys thank you very much for watching this video today I really appreciate your time and if you have any questions about what I just showed you please let me know in the comments below also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code thank you very much guys